Welcome to Ballbusters Live! I'm your host Nathan Oakley and if you are new to this channel or you've not done so already then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they are live. There's also a PayPal, Patreon and crypto link in the info box below the video. Speaking of Patreon, I'm going to do a quick shout out to all of you who do support me on Patreon so massive shout outs to Abraham Muhammad, Adrian Quintana, Alistair Main, Billy Hyvolt, Burn Fat Till My Stomach Is As Flat As The Earth, Charion Cat, Dank, Dave Rakia Gafford, David Wayne Foster, Edwin Johnson, Effie, Felix Hung, Fireball X, God Rockin, Jeronism, Joshua Balsimo, Kirsten Smith, Life Is Short, Matt, Nyby, Tar Craig, Reinhardt, Rene, Sally Ballis, Sam Hine, Skeptic936, Texas Mike, TheFlatEarthChannel.com, Tina Baker, and Tom Hawkins. So massive shout outs to all of you for supporting me on Patreon. So first shout out, or the main protagonist in this story that you're about to be told is a YouTuber called Eagle, Plane and Anchor. And Eagle, Plane and Anchor basically trimmed out a section of Ballbusters, which was broadcast on Quantum Eraser Channel. There are links in the info box and in the comment section below this video if you want to go and check out Eagle Plane and Anchor and Quantum Eraser. So during that broadcast, I got a bit of fire in my stomach and started ranting about how we've been deceived, etc, etc. But as I say, Eagle Plane and Anchor then trimmed that out and put it to a backdrop with some music. And then, um, I can't remember who, but someone else mirrored it. And then John Thor mirrored it. And then another chap who is um, called Jagzam, um, also mirrored it, but then put Spanish subtitles underneath it. So I left a comment and said, look, I'll, you know, I'll do a, a shout out for you on the show. And then I thought about it for a minute. And I was like, well, technically that was a ball busters trim out and it was originally broadcast on Quantum Eraser. So how am I going to get around just shouting it out on the middle of a debate when it's not for the debate, it's actually a ball busters. So I thought, right, sod it. I'll just do a dedicated broadcast. I'll play out his clip, and uh, as I say, there's links to his channel, which is Jagzam, um, uh, in the uh, comment section and info box below this video. So I'll play that out. I'll drop a line to the people who are part of the Ballbusters team. So once the clip has played out, I'll give that line a ring, and a couple of people in there already have said that they do fancy a quick chit chat. So there might be a bit of a chit chat afterwards. If nobody answers, then there won't be. Um, but without any further delay, I'll, uh, I'll stick this up and you can enjoy. Let me know what you think in the comment section. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. And that simple statement is the key to science. It doesn't make a difference how beautiful your guess is, it doesn't make a difference how smart you are, who made the guess, or what his name is. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. That's all. You know how I reported recently that they changed on um, Einstein's theory of general relativity on the Wikipedia page. They removed the word superseded and they replaced it with refined. And then there was a bit of back and forth in the history about who was doing what and for what reason. And basically it demonstrates they don't like certain phrases. Well, that fiend has striked again on um, Wikipedia. Ah, uh, here it is. Yeah, with the Wayback Machine. Yep. Let me make it a little bigger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> they don't like it, do they? They have to, they yeah. have to change. They have to change their science for no good reason other than to hide key words like superseded rather than refined and um, cause and effect. <laughs> and now it's just yep. missing. <laughs> yep, there it is, right there. Experiments pride into insight into cause and effect. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. Too funny. 
And yeah, it's pretty sad that they had to take it out of Wiki. I mean, they got to They're changing the rhetoric in real time, and it's obvious. But the projected, so. but their projected criticism of us back in 2015, 16, and spilling into 2017. If I say these two words, I'm sure it will prick every the back the hairs on the back of everyone's necks up. Flat Earthers are quote science deniers and how the tables have turned Sorry. what that was was projection of their own failings like any con man most of the long con is built up on bluff well they were bluffing us the whole time we've got science science proves we're on a spinning ball that's what we were told what are flat earthers well they're science deniers well let's break that down what does that actually mean it means they're projecting their pseudoscience as proving things while simultaneously calling us pseudoscience deniers. Now I'm happy to, <laughs> now that it's been broken down, go along with that. Yeah, we are absolutely denying what they call science. Because it isn't science, it's pseudoscience. Now the tables have turned 2017, 18 and 19 to the point where, like you say, they're having to edit wiki to change the fundamental principles of science so that it meets their ends when they peddle their pseudoscience. Well, isn't this an interesting turn of events? The flat earthers are the ones talking about actual science, cause and effect relationships, hypothesis based predictions that are validated or invalidated by systematic experimentation. We the flat earthers are talking about science. The purveyors of the heliocentric model aren't. They're pseudoscientists. And this is what will change the game in this arena. The recognition of this very detail. The people who tell you are on a globe are pseudoscientists. And what are we talking about here and trying to educate our audience in as flat earthers? Actual science, legitimate cause and effect relationships being established through scientific prediction hypothesis that's validated or invalidated with systematic experimentation. That's what we're talking about as flat earthers. Quick, censor them! And the main thing, the main point, the one crucial detail that I've learned that means I win when debating flat earth is this. Knowing what actual science is means I win. It is pretty much as simple as that. With that one bit of advice, if you can, if you can understand and argue from a position of actual science, and I'm going to say it again, we're flat earthers giving you this information. Abide by the scientific method and you'll win as a flat earther. What does that tell you, Globies? That when you fight with us using empiricism and science, you lose. That says it all. I'm getting all fired, fired up for a reason. We've been lied to, right? The, the Earth's not a sphere. Why have we been lied to? Well, because people peddle pseudoscience and call it science. And then you come to a flat Earth channel like this, Quantum Eraser channel. He's predominantly talking about the nature of our reality. The nature of our reality being it's a plane. It's not a sphere flying through a vacuum. And we're the ones that get censored. We're the ones that get wiki disclaimers below us, talking about reifications of flat Earth models being archaic. That's what we get for telling our audience, use the scientific method, stick to it, and you'll find out more about your reality with empiricism. And if you use that in this arena of debating about the nature of our Earth, you'll win against people who assert that the, the Earth's a globe, if you stick to the scientific method. I mean, doesn't this, it should, this should resonate with everybody in the audience, not just flat earthers. That listen to the show and go yay he's got him over a barrel with a, a, a question about whether or not they've established cause and effect and got empiricism for their claim when talking about a bloody star or something nonsensical like traveling to the moon no they haven't got any of this none of it's scientifically validated and this is how we're winning with real science something that nobody in high up academia is ever going to disagree with you on in other words as a flat earther you can argue this sub subject up to the level of academia, and unless they're indoctrinated, globe-worshipping slaves or zealots, they can't disagree with you. You're the one who's right when you're arguing from the position of the scientific method, not the globe heads, not the people who believe the space is real. 
This is, to me, quite amazing. It was back when I first got hold of the information. It got quickly, <laughs> quickly shattered. <laughs> I'll mention him now. When I was told, oh, no, no, this knife cuts both ways. We're winning as flat earthers because we're adhering to the scientific method. Isn't that glorious? It is for me. I think it's fantastic. A method that's absolutely ingrained in academia and has established bettering society with technology based on the application of that scientific method things move on in life because of this method and it's on our side as flatties wonderful science doesn't seem all that useful when people present certain experimental data you go oh what does that mean well it doesn't mean a great deal to the general public until technology comes along based on that experiment then people are all for whatever it is that you're validating through systematic experimentation because it becomes useful to them, normally much further down the line. But nothing that's punted from the pseudoscience religion of a globe is useful. None of it's useful. The only things they pretend that are useful in their model were predicted long before the heliocentric model even existed. So their claim bloody predictions aren't that great. The fact that they've managed to wrap them around a sphere is just a testament to how much they want their religion to work. It doesn't actually do anything useful. Science, on the other hand, does. It progresses humanity, and it's on flat Earth's side. Make no mistake. If it disagrees with experiment, it's wrong. Yeah, another big shout out to Jagzam, Eagle Plane and Anchor, John Thor, and anybody else that mirrored that video. Obviously. I'm completely humbled by the fact that people have taken that section, as is, I'm sure, Anthony, Chocolate Zane, and anybody else who was part of that Ball Busters episode. So we are joined by Tenth Man and Sleeping Warrior. Good to have both of you here. How are you doing? Can you hear us? Yes. Good morning. Good morning. It won't be a, an en endless diatribe in this particular discussion. It'll just be a quick natter just to round out this uh, this impromptu promotion of those particular YouTubers. So as I've said before, Quantum Erasis channel, as is uh, Jagzam and Eagle Plane and Anchor there in a, a comment and in the info box. If you want to go and subscribe to them, do that immediately. Are you there, Anthony? And is anybody else with us? Is that I am. Is it just, just you two? Yeah, yeah. Hello. That Sorry, what I was listening to. The, I, I guess we were listening to a video. Yeah, it was a section of yes. Ballbusters. So it starts off with Chocolate saying, explaining how Wikipedia has been hijacked to take out cause and effect reasoning from the explanation of science. And you and Chocolate. No, that was me. That yeah, was me. I, yeah, you were discussing it with Chocolate. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was on that, the, I think it was the second or third Ballbusters that John broadcast on. Yeah, it got translated, right? Well, yeah, someone put. Um, Do you want one of these? <laughs> Spanish subtitles. We are live. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did put. I did write that uh, in in the comments underneath Ballbusters, <laughs> but there we go. Or maybe I didn't. Maybe I didn't. No, that could be wrong. Sorry. Yes, my bad. If I didn't actually mention that. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, and I just wanted any comments from any of the people who were on that particular panel, and if they chose to join, great. I'd get a comment out of them. Hopefully, I'll get a comment out of you in that regard, Anthony. It's just one of many examples where they're changing the narrative right before our very eyes. If they're not changing Google Earth to make it match the observation, they're changing um, Wikipedia. I mean, I tried to change something on Wikipedia that was factually true. You can see Mackle Lighthouse from the beach at St. Bees, and then somebody was deleting it and changing it back so that you couldn't see it. Now, you can literally see Mackle Lighthouse from the beach at St. Bees, so it's a fact, right? And they'll change it because they don't want that fact to be out there. So it's just another example of them moving the globe posts right under our nose. Yeah, I can back that. So my wife and I and the dogs and your partner and yourself all huddled around. And Spurs, correct me if I'm wrong, was Spurs there? He was. I'm pretty sure it was five of us, including Spurs, all saw that lighthouse flashing away where it should not be seen. And then Anthony running into Wikipedia and saying, well, I can edit this. It says 80 miles or whatever it is. And it's not. It's 31 miles. So we can see it. And I was like, yeah, change it. <laughs> and uh, I think the net result was you were banned from using or adjusting wiki entries or something along those lines, right, Sleeping Warrior?
Slick. He's on mute. Slick. <laughs> Super slick. I'm sorry, I was being spoke to in the background. That's okay. What was the question, Nathan? It's it doesn't matter. I was just I was regaling the audience with your story of adjusting the Wikipedia entry for Mac Old Lighthouse, and I was asking what was the net result? Were you banned from making adjustments in Wiki if such a thing is possible? Uh, no, I'm not banned from making them. It's just that I changed it. Somebody then changed it back, right? Because they don't want that information coming out. So <laughs> I'd change it again and they changed it back. It's just ridiculous. It's just it's just bad. It's bad. But yeah, in the instance we covered on Bulbusters, it was, as I say, cause and effect being removed because pseudoscientist practitioners don't want the actual scientific method being highlighted too much when they're peddling pseudoscience that doesn't have cause and effect reasoning adhered to by systematic experimentation based on a hypothesis. Now, if that's the information that Wiki's presenting to people and we're saying, look, you don't have scientific evidence, and they go, no, 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 science is my version of whatever I say, (laughs) they're going to want a bit of a change in Wiki, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nathan, that, have you that's co- why they want to keep it flexible, right? That, so that they have the ability to change it on the fly, uh, however they want. I mean, remember, look, when we started this year, the moon wasn't in the Earth's atmosphere. Now it is, <laughs> right? So, like, in real time, they just flip and bounce whatever they want. Yeah, yeah. There is, um, I don't know whether you guys, I don't know whether it's worth, I don't know. I'm, I'm going to change topics for a sec. Um, Because I was reading some uh, in an old uh, encyclopedia, um, Encyclopedia Americana from 1958. Uh, Are you guys familiar with what I'm referring to? No. Did you get what I just sent you on Skype? Because I saw your thing on Facebook. Ah, right. So you're familiar with it. I found it. No, I've not seen that. Um, Basically, it's a paragraph out of a 1958, I think it is. Yeah, 1958. Look at all the Skype messages, bro. I, I just sent you that. (laughs) <laughs> like two minutes after go ahead sorry yeah so it was 1958 encyclopedia americana and um you know when they <clears throat> you know when religious groups um particularly like the islamic ones that are the extremists and they go around destroying um like uh what they called um archaeological discovery sites for whatever weird reason they go destroying it it's thousands of years old and they just blow it up and whatnot and you wonder why did they do that well, a lot of people say it's to remove history. They don't want that element of history being there, so they'll destroy it to hide the fact that something happened, whatever that something is. And then I remind myself of like the the burning of the books in like the Library of Alexandra um, and all the other burning of the book scenarios that we've had reference to in the past. And <clears throat> it, it dawns on me that if there was an ex- an explanation or a reason or a, a motivation to burn a load of books the knowledge that would be in them books would be the reason to remo- to hide them all, right? If you burn the books, you get rid of the knowledge that's in them. But what if they left one book out accidentally and it slipped through and they didn't quite catch it, right? And there was something in one of these encyclopedias that should have been destroyed but wasn't destroyed for whatever reason. And then somebody like us accidentally come across it. It would be devastating to the idea that we might live on a sphere if it, that book fell into the wrong hands. So I'm going to read a, a small paragraph out of this 1958 Encyclopedia Americana. <clears throat> just before you do, referring... did you pop anybody else on the line? Just pop yourselves on mute, please. Yeah, I think it's chocolate. Um, and it, it's it's referring not chocolate. to. <laughs> Come at me like that, man. <laughs> it sounds I'm like on someone's mute. rubbing their um, microphone against the collar or something. But anyway, um, it re- I'll read what it says. Um, it's talking about f- flights over Antarctica and exploration from the early 1900s um, and different people doing different things. And then they get plane flight and they start flying over, the pl- uh, over that area. And I'll just read what it says verbatim. It says, uh, let's find the paragraph. Right, it says, four United States planes flew from New Zealand to McMurdo Sound on December the 20th, 1955. Right, that's their summer, right? and made the exploratory flights over unknown parts of the continent until January the 18th, 1956, when they returned to New Zealand. Now, this is the most important bit. These flights proved the inland areas to be featureless in character, with a dome 13,000 feet high at about latitude 80 degrees south, longitude 90 degrees east. So this is reported in a particular encyclopedia, from the day back in 1958. Now, the problem is, if if you believe that we live on a sphere, 
and you believe that the gas pressure that we breathe is caused by gravity, and then you find out that Einstein says gravity is not a force, you haven't got anything even potentially capable of holding the atmosphere onto the sphere, right? The atmosphere onto the ball. Because the opposite of a container is like the creation of a, of a well or a, a cup or a bucket where you, f- you flip all the sides up to create a bucket. Well, the opposite would be flipping them all down to create a sphere. It would be the opposite of a container. So you've got a container that would be a bucket. Imagine a decontainer being the opposite. That would be the sphere. You can't have gas pressure on a sphere without some kind of force holding it down. But even if you did have that force, it still needs to be equal to the the mass of the object that you're trying to slow down from bursting into space, right? But we know that, according to Henry Cavendish, it was a 50 millionth of the object's weight, and that was the biggest it could be, right? Not greater than. So whatever this force that doesn't actually exist, that isn't a force, according to Einstein, 100 years later, that's like now 100 years old, whatever that force needed to be, it wasn't even strong enough to, to give us the atmosphere, if it even existed in the first place. But Einstein said it's not a force anyway. But you've still got that paradox where you've still got to find something to stick to the outside of a ball because it's the opposite of a container. It doesn't allow gas pressure to form. So it has to be contained. We have to be living in some kind of containment, right? And I've always been reluctant to say don't because there's never any evidence of it, right? It's almost as if they've burnt all the evidence in books, in libraries across the world at some point. Oh, hang on. They did do that. But now we've got one that actually references the dome itself. It says, um, it, these flights proved the inland areas to be featureless in character with a dome 13,000 feet high at about 80 south, 90 east. That's direct reference for a glo- uh, for a dome. Now, should this book have been burnt? Yeah. It hasn't been burnt, and we can see it. So this book's reference it. Now, that makes then you lead to the question, well, what was in all the other books? Let's say this one did slip through the net because it was generally considered not to be contentious. Let's say this book slipped through and all the other books that were burnt all had references to it in, uh, as well. And then you think, well, if we're not on a sphere and Antarctica does exist and it is a flat plane, it has to be a nice ring around the outside edge. And there has to be a dome because this seems to be referencing it, right? And if all the other books have been burnt, that would be the reason why Flat Earth doesn't have any evidence to support it because it was all burnt. But now we do have a referenced book from an encyclopedia, 1958, from uh, Encyclopedia Americana. And it's literally saying these flights proved the inland areas to be featureless with a dome 13,000 feet high at latitude 80 south, 90 east. That's, that's really pertinent, guys. If there is a dome, and now we know where it is and how high up it is, that's the reason why we can't go to Antarctica. Oh, you... There's a nice, about that. nicely strung together narrative that you've put together with ice walls and domes simply because of a entry in an encyclopedia. Whilst we simultaneously decry the changes made in Wikipedia, like the Encyclopedia Britannica or America, has got no ability to have changes made to it as it goes along its path narratives fed into the text that's in there why is it this this 1950s encyclopedia entries only just been found now unless it's been fed into us i'm very skeptical yeah but (laughs) the video actually shows the book it comes out of (gasps) i'm sure so what i I heard of it before but it's just the first time i'm seeing it pop up on the internet doesn't mean it's just words in a book Anyway, yeah, but there's one issue with it. What's that? It, What's it doesn't the actually describe the angle uh, of approach to the dome shape. It's just saying dome. It doesn't specify. Well, on a sphere, on a sphere, it can't no, be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't specify how it was experienced. It's just it saying matter. dome. It doesn't matter. It can't be. The it's case on the on inside a of a dome or against a dome. It doesn't say. Yeah, it's it doesn't not matter. Go on, Tenth Man. It's not important because, as the video that was shown here on Ballbusters today, we are going to work our way backwards using the scientific method. So if it's not experiment, it's not science, as Richard Feynman said. So if we're going to, mm-hmm. if we're going to be that way about it, which I think is a very good way to approach it, is to say demonstrate water adhering to a sphere. Well, they can't demonstrate gas pressure without a container. Well, they can't. Well, then that leaves open what Anthony is saying. 
So until we go down there, until we're able and allowed, we don't ha even have to go and say it's that way. We just have to say your narrative is false. You can't do these things. You've been calling it science. We want to go down there and see for ourselves. That's the only way it's going to happen. Totally agree. Couldn't have said it better myself. It's not yeah, that it's it not interesting. It is basically rumors. So. It is interesting. I'm not going to decry that in any way, Anthony, and I'm glad you've brought it, it up. It's, it is it's definitely not noteworthy. It's, doc it's not rumors, Arwen. It's documented parts of history that seems to have slipped through the burning of books escapade. Uh, it, has, it, it doesn't describe how it exactly was scientifically tested. So it is... Yeah, we're going to have to take it as a witness account. Exactly. It's anecdotal it, at best. It's not it's anecdotal. Not... It, it goes on to describe how these planes were being pulled out of the sky. They were just disintegrating in the middle of flight. And they thought that it was um, German technology that had they'd, they'd perfected some kind of pulse technology or something. But they realized afterwards that, it, well, it's got the, the crash. They seem to be crashing into the dome. That's what it seems to be. Okay. Yeah. As I say, well, it's I'll very. Say, I'll very, say it's interesting. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, I'll say, if, I'll say is, more. if we do live in a ball, there would no, there would never be a reason for something about a dome being included in a, in an encyclopedia, right? So yeah, I'll say it's interesting because that's a completely different narrative. But yeah, and I mean, of all how the, much oh, oh, of all the, the 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 adjectives or the describing words they use to describe this thing, they call it dome. That means one thing, right? And on the ball model, there can't be anything there. But there is something there. There seems to be something there. And if they burnt all the books that were also referencing it, and it also happens to be around about this early 1900s as well, it's almost as if they had an education reset by the World Wars. Because that's what I think the World Wars were. I think that they were literally education reset because technology and intelligence was gaining too much momentum and the powers were losing control. They needed someone to distract everybody and kill off a lot of that intelligence. And it seems to be that's what they've done. Um, I just find it incredible that there's reference of a dome at the only one place that we'd expect it to be if the Earth was flat and it's there. Hang on, Anthony. It's not, that's not the, <clears throat> excuse me, that's not the only reference. Genesis chapter 1, verse 6. As a Christian, I believe God made the firmament. It's right there in Genesis. And it's the, it's the first thing he made on the second day and the only thing he made on the second day before he made earth habitable for people. So I could go to a reference called the Old Testament and say it talks about a container. Now, when I'm talking to someone who doesn't believe the Bible like I do, I can't start there. I have to say, how can you have gas pressure without a container? See, and so I'm, I start. I'm in that second point. I, I, it's not that I don't believe the Bible. It's just that I'm reluctant to accept that it's true because well, it's... Well, let me finish. Yeah, let yeah. me finish. Yeah, yeah go so, on. Sorry. So, so, so people are saying we're a sphere and and we don't have any kind of container because we can't see it. And then we say, well, demonstrate that with gas law and everything else that, you know, with all the control variables that have to go with a true experiment. Well, they can't, but we could do it inside of a lab and show that the only way to have gas pressure, if it's pressing upon something, and the minute you open up a membrane, it's gonna fill the available space. So we can demonstrate you can't have gas pressure without a container. They can't do what they say. And then I reference an Old Testament passage and say, hey, here in this holy book, it says that on the second day, if you believe God created everything, he did put a container. That's all I'm saying. They don't have to accept it. I'm just saying it fits what we are experiencing. What? Really? Container? Yeah, Arwen. What, what yeah. was the word used to describe it? Rakia from the root word raka. But does, doesn't that mean tent or roof? It means firmament, solid object. Yes. No, roof. that's. And it's it's the firmament. Firmament. You're in agreement. Hang on, hang Let's on. not argue. Hang You're on. in the agreement. Context, the, con the context is waters above and waters below. It held the waters above. It ha what can hold waters right, that, above? That, the inevitable conclusion you can draw from that is that there is a separation of layers doesn't hint to any geometry of any kind. Right. No, what you can draw from all that of is the words back. you used all hint at that, not a geometry. Excuse right. me, Aaron. You're not a Hebrew. You're not using their view of it in their language of that time. That's how you study these things. They uh, always knew it was a dome. Now, we can leave it there if you like, but if you're going to say you know what the old Hebrew, how they saw it, 
well, how? Because I, I'm not a Hebrew. I have to go and see what the words mean and what they said. And so I'm just saying, because there's non-Christians, they won't accept it, and that's not my business. My point I'm just is, taking your words as you've given me them. It's not my words. Intro. It is. Not, You're the one relaying it. Well, we I asked you for okay, the words. This, the, Let there I, be I a don't get it, in the... No offense, uh, Tenth Man and Darwin. It seems like, for the most part, you're in agreement. I don't think it's crucial to the point being made. Who cares? Let's move on. Exactly. Look, I'm not saying there's nothing to the Bible concerning uh, our cosmogony. I'm just saying that the conclusions that some of the flat earthers like to draw from them seems to be a little too far reached. It gives a limited insight as to aspects of the realm. It doesn't give the geometry, really. Only anything geometrical related, the only thing is a circle. And that is it, a circle. It's the only geometrical aspect that I've heard. Arwen, you come on this show every day and you agree with you can't have gas pressure without a container. I am referencing an Old Testament. Can I finish? I'm referencing a verse in the first book of the Bible in the first chapter that God made a firmament, something to divide the waters from the waters. Now, I don't know the details, what it's made out of exactly, if it's flat, the dome, I don't know those things. All I'm saying is that it fits what we know and can experience, which is you can't have gas pressure without a container. I'm not trying to force it on anybody. I'm just saying it's there. You're trying to say, well, how do you know it's a dome? How do you know it's, I don't know. Oh, Arwen, why do you uh, reject the, the um, <clears throat> you just said then that there was no geometry for the dome, but it's stated mm-hmm. 13,000 feet high and about 80 degrees south and 90 degrees west or whatever the other half of it was. Right. Then <clears throat> that's giving you the geometry of not just where it is, but how close to us. I mean, we can get to 13,000 feet pretty easily in a plane, right? That's geometry, right? Presumably. Yeah, I'm not denying there's some kind of phenomena there. But it doesn't give a geometry. It just says there's a phenomena there at that latitude. You're at cross purposes. Well, he's talking Bible, Anthony's talking about this encyclopedia entry. So, yeah, that's, that is true. Um, so just okay, so this doesn't end up being a, a very long show, I was only hoping to keep it to about half an hour. Um, have you got any closing remarks, Chocolate? Uh, no, not really. I mean, like I said, it's interesting, but, you know, I, I don't know what the container is and, <laughs> you know, I don't assume to know. But, yeah, it's definitely interesting that something like this would be in an encyclopedia. So I'll give it that. And then, obviously, with the Bible and the, I mean, they, uh, I'm not a Bible guy, but, yeah, the Bible talking about the uh, firmament and stuff. I mean, sure. And we all know you can't have gas pressure without a container. So there's got to be something. You know, unless it's something else that we've not thought of at all. But right. <laughs> it's definitely right. not exactly. a ball spinning around in a vacuum. Perfect. With that, I'll say, if you're watching this on Nathan Oakley channel, I may carry on the show a little bit longer, so there'll be a slightly extended after show to this Ball Busters. But unfortunately, if you're watching this live on Nathan Oakley 1980, this is where we bid you farewell. A huge, massive, enormous thank you to... Zigzam, hope I've got his name right, uh, Quantum Eraser for hosting Ballbusters typically and uh, links to both those channels are in the info box and in the comments section. Another thank you to Sleeping Warrior, Arwin, Tenth Man and Chocolate Sane for making the panel section of this Ballbusters possible. Of course, a massive thank you to all of you in the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing the show. Stay tuned if you're watching on Nathan Oakley channel. I've been Nathan Oakley and I'll see you all in the next Ballbusters. introduce the after show i did i did just in case anybody was like oh i really wanted to add this really critical detail that you didn't let me on the live show but it was an impromptu live show to begin with originally i was just going to mirror the guy's um video with spanish subtitles but i thought that won't have enough context 
for people to boo go. boo we want a sunday ball busters every weekend tough <laughs> sunday and saturday come on yeah tough look the thing is, on the one hand, you've got the um, <clears throat> the ball explanation that gravity holds the atmosphere to the Earth around. We know that gravity is not a force. And we know that there's zero physics to support their assertion, right? They've got nothing. But on our side, we've also got no evidence for the dome. There's no evidence for whatever. To, to, to we, have, we only have it as the alternative based on the fact that you can't have gas pressure without a container, right? But now we do have evidence of a dome. Not yeah. of a dome, but it, it is anecdotal and it is uh, circumstantial. But at least if we know where to look for a dome exactly where to oh, look absolutely. maybe we could actually find a way to do it totally agree to that it is definitely a good clue to start looking yeah empirically yeah as totally long as agree. we're not presenting this as scientific evidence then yeah that's fine it's always good to look at certain things right you know it's a good lead but right maybe yeah, Nathan hates the dome, don't you? <laughs> no, no, I've got no, not at all. On the contrary, I've got nothing against any dome. But right. in terms of the the weight of this evidence, it's an entry in a an encyclopedia. Well, what if I am a globe head and I come along and go, right? You've been asking for evidence for molten iron core. It's riddled through every encyclopedia I can present to you. So what does that mean? Well, not a great God deal. Has no, it has no testimony account. <laughs> Well, in there is testimony account. Action. That's the difference. Yeah, but there is testimony account in that article. I only read like two lines. There's a lot more to it. That's um, oh, yeah, uh, that they flied into it. That's personal interaction. That's at least some kind of phenomenon with the multiple. If I may, or if, it's if just I'm, all assumed. If I may. But, but I understand what Nathan's saying because I had encyclopedias growing up where they clearly told me it was a ball, and mm-hmm. in the middle of a vacuum. So. I understand when it's like, all right, well, it says that, but I mean, obviously, why would it say that if that's not where we live, right? That's what we're looking. That's the only reason we're looking at it, because it goes against their narrative of there not being a dome, right? Yeah, if so I it's may, kind of we're go missing on, the yeah, go ahead, Tiff, go on, Tiff, man. We're we're missing the point of the video that Nathan showed. The video that Nathan showed that we were to comment on and to kind of stay on, and I'm okay with the subject anyway, but was the flat earthers are using the scientific method, not the ballers. Correct. And so what we want to do is stay within the scientific method when it's something that we observe in the natural world. We destroy them, lock down every time if we just stay that tight. In our, yeah, yeah. Okay, so if we just stay there, they die. That's right. If if we move out of there, like I don't use Genesis one six to prove anything. I, I that's what I believe, but I don't use it to prove anything. What I say is, how can you have gas pressure without a container? And I kill him with that. Thank you for that argument, uh, QE and Nathan. And it's it's over now. It's up to them to figure out. Okay, if they've lied to us about that and they've called this science when we know it's not science because you can't have gas pressure without a container, what else have they lied to us about? So I'm I'm with Nathan on this. I don't bring in stuff that I believe in into the argument. I I want to bring the scientific method into the argument and destroy the lie right there. Yeah, the cru- the crucial part of that video was Nathan saying you know, back when this started, what is it that we were called? Science denies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He said those two words should, said chills up your spine. Science deniers. That's what we were called because we were told the body of science, the body of science, we have the body of science to prove that we live on a globe. Now, fast forward 2019, almost 2020, and we are being told that science doesn't prove things, that we don't care about the cause, we see the effects, and therefore we can just, you know, assert whatever story we want to behind these effects. While they change things in real time, right in front of us, right underneath our, our feet, they're trying to change the narrative. And that's what we're pointing out, because when flat earthers start saying, what's your independent variable? Where is your science? that you've claimed that you've had all this time that's back this globe and all of a sudden 
now it's science doesn't prove things. Well, that's a big change, man. And it's very noticeable. Right? It's very clear to everybody that's paying attention that you guys are changing. And when I say you guys, I mean the globe. There's right? You guys are changing your narrative. And <laughs> I mean, keep going. Because it's just to your own detriment. This model that you're standing behind that you've chosen to go all in on and defend, we're calling the bluff. <laughs> it's a bluff and you've been had. Back in 2015, and... I, I interviewed a guy called Mark Knight, Wakey Wakey, you'll know him as. And in the interview, he was describing visually what the globe is. And he said, it's a papier-mâché model. And from a distance, it looks really solid. And all of the holes are covered up with the papier-mâché. And the changing of the narrative in this analogy is smearing on another layer of papier-mâché onto that paper globe that you're presented with as a model. Now, in his analogy, he then went up to the globe, this papier-mâché globe, and just pokes it. And what you realize is that it's paper thin. There's nothing of substance to the model. It's a paper thin papier mache that's made of nonsense. Right, it's a prop. And we're supposed to fantasize the rest uh, with it and don't think too deeply about it. Don't think Sorry. too deeply because you've been predictively programmed with the concepts and ideas of the religion of heliocentrism in every movie, TV show, and billboard poster, icon, you name it. There's globes everywhere. And if you're left with the ideas of Star Wars, Star Trek, Buck Rogers, you've got all of those concepts firmly cemented without you having to even suspend disbelief when they tell you that they're doing somersaults on high wires in a second law of thermodynamics violation sky vacuum they call out of space you don't have to think oh that couldn't be possible but if they hadn't brainwashed you if they hadn't shown you space in tv and movies and all the rest of the, the documentaries on discovery you wouldn't just be accepting of the information when they presented it to you in the manner they do you would just see straight through it Anything else? So when you were to... saying about the paper mache, yeah, <clears throat> that reminds me of the quote from uh, Werner Heisenberg: "The first sip of a glass of natural science will make you an atheist, but at the bottom of the glass, God awaits you." It's kind of you, you can't really be an, a, an atheist in, when you're into flat Earth. You have to, you have to realize and accept at some point that there has to be a creator of some kind. I mean, you don't even have to argue who or what the creator is. You just have to accept that this doesn't exist by virtue of a cosmic explosion. Something else has happened. Yeah, the most recent um, Bullbusters released on Quantum Eraser Channel, Bullbuster 7, is covering the ontological primitives and explaining, again, with experimental data, something that's been empir empirically validated through systematic experimentation, in this case, the delayed choice Quantum Eraser, to give you an answer to that question. So the ontological primitives, again, I'll round out by saying subscribe below to Quantum Eraser channel, the typical home of ball busters. Any other comments to round out the after show? Anything desperately needed to be said that hadn't been already? Yeah, Liverpool are about to kick off against United. Ooh. <laughs> Chocolate. Flat Earth early bird. 2 p.m. Amsterdam time every yeah. day on my channel. A R W I G N. Yeah, yeah well, I'll just say uh, you can't have information without a knower. It's it's kind of just simple. <clears throat> Arwen always pauses just long enough for everyone to think he stopped talking. <laughs> yeah. <Arwen. laughs> uh. I do my uh, best. Tenth man, anything <laughs> to add? Uh, no, just a great work everybody on on the panel let's keep this going let's keep the fire to the feet of the liars perfect again with that i'll say a huge massive enormous thank you to 10th man sleeping warrior chocolate saying and arwin for making this after show possible i've been nathan oakley and i'll see you all in the next ball busters